Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be doing another walkthrough video editing session. So let's get into it. So, so far what I've done is just, uh, I created a new library called Walkthrough 2, new project that's 1080p, 24 frames per second. And then I've only dumped the footage that I shot uh, in order of file number or name. And that's it, that's where we're at right now. So uh, this is the process from start to finish basically. So first off, when we dump in our HLG footage, it does not look good in Final Cut Pro. So we need to change the color space. So let's go ahead and hit Command A, select all the clips, go to I, and then right here, go to Color Space Override. You're gonna wanna select Rec 2020. Hey, and there's a nice video clip from the back of my car. So let me get rid of that. All right, so we switched it, Rec 2020, and now, I'm gonna have to drop, actually we wanna eliminate all of the audio from these clips as well. We're not gonna be using any audio. I mean, you could potentially, if you got like a waterfall or something like that, you want some sound effects in your, so I just dropped one all the way down to negative decibels, hit Command A, and then hit Shift Command V, and we're gonna just uh, apply the audio attribute volume so you can see how the volume basically just went away in all the clips. Now on this particular home, there's a part that I wasn't recording, so I had to go back and reshoot it. So there's gonna be some duplicates that we'll have to um, weed out so that, we're, so that we're kind of following along with the way I shot. I think it was as I was coming into the house the first time, um, I had to redo all of these. So actually from this, I think going into the door is when somehow it got messed up. So let me see here. Yep, here we go. Here's the door again. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of all of these clips. All right. All right, so we got front shots. We got the front or coming into the house. Let me see how much we, how much footage do we have? So it looks like 12 minutes and almost 13 minutes worth of footage. Obviously the walkthrough video, we're gonna want no longer than two and a half minutes. I usually try to target around two minutes. Um, but what we're gonna do first is just kind of go through and eliminate clips that we don't like or the ones that didn't turn out. All right, so let's do it. Let's. Let's just, I usually like to grab it. I definitely don't want to sit there, hit here and watch 12 minutes worth of footage. I basically just grab this tool up here and just skim across. All right, so that's a, I didn't really like, that one's too wide, too much of the street. This one was better. Oh, I like this one. That's a good left shot. Um, Trying to think if you even we'd want that. I like this shot. I really like having like things in the side of your shots. It just just makes it more interesting. Yeah, actually I do like this that much better. So this straight on shot didn't quite turn out, but I had a, a good alternative there. Don't really like that shot either. So we'll just go there, we have this. This is a good shot. I mean, we could, let me see. What order do we wanna do this in? So we'll start over here. Yeah, we actually don't even need this shot either, I don't think. Maybe I'll open up with this shot. This is probably, this is probably my favorite shot of the front, I think. Boom, and then we, we work from that side to this side, and then now we're walking towards the house. Um, I don't think that number plate shot worked out. I think I might have uh, tried a couple different shots going through the door, so we'll see which ones work. So this whole beginning process is just a uh, process of elimination. Let me see, so we already got all of the entryway right there. I like that shot. This doesn't add too much additional value, so I'm gonna get rid of this one. 
So we have this one. Yeah, we can zoom in there. We could use that. We got a little panning shot coming in. This just shows what it is. What if we come in through the door and then we come out this way? Boom. All right, I'll leave both of those in there. I'll probably just end up using one of them, but we'll just leave them both for right now. So that one's all right. You definitely tell my footage will need a little bit of stabilization on some of these. All right. These two are pretty similar. I like the white, this wider shot. I think you get a little bit more value in it. I didn't like how close I was to the island either. Should have sat back a little bit. This one's kind of cool still, where you can see outside. That would be a cool transition to the outside position. That one's all right. This one's not bad. You can see how it's kind of choppy because um, it's not rendered out, but. All right, let's see, so we walk over here, and we have a little turning. I don't think we need this shot, this turn shot. Got a little straight on shot. The garage shot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, well, I'll leave it in here. So once we eliminate all of the clips, we can duplicate the project. Hold on, now I have two two clips of the same thing. So this is, I think the second one turned out better. Get rid of the first. That's usually what happens whenever you see multiples of the same clips. All right, so, so far we've eliminated a, a minute or so of footage. All right, this one's walking through. Nice. I like that shot. I'll keep this. I don't know about the turn. It's, it's, it just gets too dark because of how bright that window is. And it's, I don't really like doing too many turns. So I'm going to trim this one off. We may still, we may use it. It's a good transition to the other separate wing in the house. Actually, you see, because that shot, we see the front, and then we transition to going down the hall. That, that's much better, uh, more better controlled lighting for sure. We went all the way into the master. All right, we got a little panning shot, sitting area, straight across shot. Now we're going towards the bathroom. All right, all of these look pretty usable. Do I get the shower in this shot? Not really. Just a little movement. The master closet's nothing too impressive, but I may keep it in there, we'll see. All right, transition to the other room, that's not bad. All right, some of these. So this is the transition into the room. This one, just a panning shot. What is this? Up and down shot. Let me get rid of this one. This one actually is probably the better shot in the room. A lot of these like secondary rooms, we don't want to spend a whole lot of time in them. We can just get one or two shots. I think my focus was bad, so yeah. Yeah, this one I don't need. All right, the bathroom. Still got two of these shots. Let me watch this. Yeah, 
Yeah, you saw how it did like a little hunt, a little focus hunt. All right, so then I reversed it. All right, that's the right shot to keep, which was the second one, which is usually the case. Man, this is a much, that's a much better shot. I really like this shot, like, but it would be more towards the front. So let me zoom out. I'm just gonna move this one. This would be a great, like, come into the home shot. It's probably one of my favorite shots of the inside. So somewhere around here, I'll just try to put it in the same similar spot. All right, so we got all this, the master. Now we're going outside. You know, I think for this video, we'll focus on the main selling features of the home, which are, you know, the backyard, the area, uh, the kitchen, you know, all the main areas. We won't spend too much time in the area, other areas, but. Let's focus on eliminating some bad shots. This one could work out. This one, I'm not a huge fan of that one. This one right here, a little nice walking shot. Could be good, that one's pretty good maybe too. Uh, not so much that one. This is a panning shot off of the porch. All right, not bad. Corner shot. This one's just, I like this, that second shot much better. And let's see, backyard shot. I mean, I tried to show this side of the yard Yeah, I mean, we could use a short clip on it. And then we got some B-roll shots. Just trying to add some, I guess some potential interestingness to the video sometimes when you're just showing the house. Yeah, but some of these are like forced right here. You don't want it to look too cheesy. Let's take a look. This one, that one's a potential. This one does nothing for me. You know, I think these ones were shot in slow motion. Why does it say 60p? I, I was thinking that these ones were shot in S and Q. So let me see if they were. Let's slow it, slow this one down 10% to 10%, let's see. All right, 10% is definitely, there's not enough there. What about 20? Yeah, like 20%. So if I shot, if our, so if it if the if this clip is really I don't know why it would say 60p. I'm pretty sure I transitioned to S and Q shooting at 120 frames per second. So if we're shooting 120 and our timeline is 24, that means we could slow it down to 20%, and it should not have any choppiness to the footage beyond 20%. It's gonna be less than 24 frames. And uh, we'll either ha we'd have to use optical flow. But I know my timeline is still kind of rendering. But yeah, that looks, these all look pretty, pretty, pretty much slow motion. All right, we'll just do, do it for the ones that we wanna keep. All right, I got some, this one you can kind of see the house. All right, let me copy this one and then paste on these because these, these were all shot in the same method. Uh, it's gonna be whatever, volume and retiming is fine. Retiming is the... Uh... Yeah. You know, this one's not bad because you can see the house it... You know, I don't like when you're just shooting random things and you can't connect it to the house like this one. It's like two walls and a, and a cactus. 
but sometimes you're just like, ah, oh, this could work. I mean, I was kind of fight trying to find some interesting things. We could throw this in the kitchen. I'll put three seconds of it. I'll, I'll move it up. And same with this one. We could use this one in the kitchen. Just to kind of break up all the shots. So I'll just do a three second clip, move it over here. What is this one? All right. Well, not the most impressive faucet, so I'm going to say no to that one. I kind of like how this looks underneath, but the thing I don't like about it is the angle. I think I might've gotten a better angle. Here we go, here we go. You, this is exactly what I'm talking about. So this is the same fixture. We got this angle where we see two walls behind it. We can't really connect it to what, what am I looking at? This next one, the same thing, right? But then I choose another angle and I'm like, you know what? We can see the pillars. This one right here is good. That being said, that exposure really, we could pick. It's so slow that we could just go back here where the exposure is good. All we need is three seconds. We know that, you know, using somewhat auto exposure, uh, if you wanted this perfect, you'd have to have your camera on manual and set it exactly so it doesn't change any settings or anything. All right, that one, definitely not impressed with that one. And then here's the last, what is this? This is in the master bedroom, but a viewer would not know. All right, so we have basically, here we'll, we'll just trim this down to three seconds. All right, so we basically have a few B-roll shots. We got one, two, three, four, five. I guess this is considered one as well. Shift Command V. I'm gonna uh, paste the retiming on this one as well, since this one was shot S and Q as well. Now you can speed it up if you didn't want it all the way slow, or five. I guess what would it be considered? Five times slow or one twenty? Yeah, I think it's five x slow motion. This same with this one. But maybe, maybe we just do this one slow 50%, not all of them slow 20%. I mean, the render looks bad, but you know, definitely don't want a whole bunch of super slow shots. All right, so what I'll do while we're assembling this video, I'll throw these B-roll shots over here. Let me get rid of this extra black space hold or holder, placeholders, I guess you would call them. Um, so this one will stay in the backyard. This one will go when we're over by the porch. I guess this one's backyard as well. We might not need all those backyard ones. These two, or in the kitchen, and then this one was in that living room. So I like to just put them next to where where we would use it. So, all right, so here's the here's the shot of the fixture. We can, whoops, I extended that. Let's grab it, drop it on the timeline. This one. All right, these two are kitchen. So let's go to the kitchen. All right, so here is. Do I even have a shot? Like the cafe would make no sense since it's looking at a wall. You don't even see it. You only see it in that slow motion shot. I'm just gonna get rid of it. All right. So that's pretty much scrubbing through so we started at 12, 13 minutes worth of footage. Now we're down to eight minutes and 56 seconds. I feel like all of these are potentially usable. 
So now what I'm going to do is duplicate the project. And then uh, either you can leave the duplicated one as a safety I, out of habit. I always just click double click on it and just work from that. And now we'll, uh, we'll get to work on trimming the, the usable clips, right? So we'll trim them to, you know, around three second clips or what we think is interesting. Let's zoom in. All right, th man, this one I actually shot very smooth. I'm usually not the smoothest guy. And now sometimes the, uh, uh, I guess you would call it the, I guess you, I call it sticking, but it's, hold on, it's M. M turns it on and off. Oh no, sorry, N I mean. Yeah. It's, uh, man, I forget the term for it, but it's where your your thing will always stop on the beginning of 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 these clips. So if you hit N, why can I not remember what this is? It's not even on this list. Um, it's like the it's like a the magnet tool, whatever. Some I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head right now. But anyways, you can see how it um, sticks to the. It automatically stops basically, so it helps you to get to the front and ending uh, faster, but sometimes you don't want that, so you just hit N and it disables that. So, all right, let's zoom in. All right, so we can stabilize this shot. Stabilization, all right. Now this one, when does it start to get good? Maybe right here, you can still see the cactus. This is a good one for blade speed since it's such a long one. And we kind of want to give it a buffer to, to spin out. Let's do custom, how fast are we right now? Let's do 800, probably not even fast enough. Probably want it faster, let's double check. Now we shot in 4K60, like highest bit rate. This computer can handle it, but it would be much smoother if it was shot, uh, you know, lower quality. You could actually do, do it a little bit faster. So we got the ramp up. All right, we'll see how we'll see how that looks once it's done rendering. We'll we'll revisit it here a little bit. That's a six second clip. Usually, that's around what a, a like a blade speeded clip would be. Now this one, sometimes you don't necessarily want the blade speed, but we can just like so we're going in, and then what I'll do is just cut to where it gets interesting again. So although this is all one clip, you know, we'll go from this part to this part. And let me see where it's smooth. Yeah, it was kind of choppy when I first started here, right? So we're right here a little bit too much. All right, right there, it starts to get smoother. So I'm gonna cut it right there. Do we really care much about the whole turn? I mean, the flares actually don't look that great. I think I was shooting at F, F4 maybe. All right. Yeah, that definitely is way too fast on the clips. Well, we'll fine tune it once we get back to it. Yeah, these these clips were just way too way too short. 
two and a half, three seconds is a good is a good uh, clip length. Now these straight on shots are ones that we'll do like a zoom in. Like a zoom in shot. So like coming from from outside to inside, we'll do a zoom in transition. Um, and all right, and then right, right when we get inside the house. This is kind of boring. I actually like Actually, let me see. Well, I feel like we need a little bit of what it looks like right when you first walk in before before I transition to something like that. This shot is very boring though. So I may I may end up uh, eliminating it. I like this shot starting right here. All right, that's good. It's just a good, good, good composition. You can see all those beams. Looks nice. This one's kind of awkward. The way I was moving was a little bit awkward. Let me see how it looks next to this. I guess we can go further in because we already got that perspective, the wider. What happens if we blade speed right here? I know some of y'all are thinking, relax on the blade speeds already. Goodness gracious. Hey man, it's just the style we like. Still too slow. Twelve hundred. Do we even like this clip? All right, I was like swinging here. All right, that one's not bad. Potential. All right, let's see. That blight. Actually, I don't even like this shot. Let's get rid of it. It's just too awkward of my movements. I do like, see, I do like how we come over here. We can still see that area. We get a feel for it. We might need to make this one a little longer since we eliminated that one. So we can just, you know, experience the shot a little bit. That, that fixture. All right. I liken that better. See how, uh, yeah, you spin couple minutes on a clip and then just just delete it like that but trust me I'll find another shot to blade speed I don't want to go all the way all, all, all up in there I went too too far in there so uh, this shots very boring getting through this doorway so it's when the blade speed comes in handy. Make it fast. Let's do the old 1200. All right. All right, so we're here. Now we're here. Going through in the kitchen. Let's transition to another shot. All right. Man, I am moving slow. Hold on, let me see if I have a better kitchen angle. 
I had that shot that I was closer up. But hey, let's mix it up. Let's, uh, we got a slower pace shot. It's cool. No big deal. Might need to stabilize it even though I'm moving slow. Yeah, let's go ahead. Throw a little stabilizer on that. Yeah, all right, so we're slowing it down. Honestly, don't even like that B-roll shot that we got. This one, if it works, probably start it right there. And it would be a blade speed because it's taking too long to get over to the window. So let's see. All right. Air blade speed. Shift B. And the uh, space bar is what's starting and stopping your timeline. Let's roll out here. We're in when the good views start to pop in here, let's try this 1200, 1200 blade speed action. All right, that might be good. Stabilize that as well. I could tell I was a little shaky on the footage. Go to this next one. All right, here's a here's a here's a missing kitchen shot that I would I we needed. It's looking for something like this. Let's move this. We need this over here, as this you know after we come into the kitchen, we need like a kitchen establishing shot, which could use a little bit of stabilization. Because definitely you want to get multiple shots in most kitchens unless it's not a selling feature. Most people have a, you know, they take pride in their kitchen. And kitchen's usually the place that looks pretty good. All right, right here. Let's start further off here. Let's, let's get there faster. And we'll get the entry into the doorway. That, uh, yeah, that autofocus turned out nice. Stayed focused on the appliances. All right, let's see. All right. Probably a little bit fast. I'm gonna have to revisit that clip. Let's see. If... A little jittery on that. So that one's two seconds. Turn on stabilization on this clip. We're putting this computer through the ringer. Hopefully, by the time we get back to it, it's all uh, rendered out. I'm gonna remove the garage. And that workshop, it just doesn't, it's not very appealing. We have them in case the agent really wanted the garage or that little area in the shot, but we don't necessarily need it. So, you know, we'll just remove it. All right, let's see. All right, so now from here, we're going to the opposite side of the home. Shift B. Get rid of that initial. This could be a smooth blade speed. We come through here. And where do we roll out? Right before I start to turn, I think. Maybe right here. Let's try it. And what number are we going to today? 1200. Probably a bit much, but we'll see. And it's not gonna look smooth, but it might work out. All right. We have other options if it doesn't. We'll also stabilize this one. All right, on to this next one. Let's 
Do I like this shot? No. I really like the other shot because we already got that angle. This shot looks pretty good. Just a quick slider-like shot. How long is this clip? Two and a half. Stabilize it. Let's move on to the next here. Now this is where, all right, we just kind of make our way to the next room or next area of the home. We only we only want to go like till there and then we'll, but we don't want this clip to last nine seconds. So shift B, we'll go maybe to here. Just let it cruise for a little bit. Let's do that 1200. And when we're all, all said and done, I'm gonna have to be moving these 1200s to something else. All right, let's see if we can watch this at all. Mm, yeah, the shot's not bad, but it's unnecessary. You don't necessarily need it at that point. All right. I like this, sh whoops, sh let me hold down, or oh, sorry, B. I'm not gonna blade speed it. I'm just gonna, I don't think we necessarily, man, that is a super fast, 1200. All right, well, we're just cruising down here. We don't need to go all the way. We can just say, you know, we're going show that we're going to the other wing of the house. Here we are in the master. Now what master shots do we want to use? Uh, I mean, I didn't get a whole bunch, so we got to use this one. Looks kind of jittery a little bit. I shot these in uh, 60 frames per second as well, 4K 60. So we could slow these down too if we needed to. Uh, and pretty, plenty of frames for this stabilization to do its magic. All right, let's see here. Do I want that? Sure. It's the master bedroom. We'll give it a little shine. Move this up to where we were. Hold down B, click. Get rid of this tail end. All right, now we're moving through here. Let's get rid of this. We just want a, uh, just a subtle move in. And now let's, let's see if it gets smoother. All right, I was a little smoother. So after I did that little move right there, I'll start using the, right, and then stop it right there. What are we at? A little over two seconds. Two. Now here's the bathroom shot. Now, regardless of what editing platform that you're using, these, you know, these are all simple. It's like a, it's like a process, right? You could apply this process to whatever one, whatever they all do. You know, you cutting footage. It's this the principles apply no matter what you're using. Uh, do I like the pan better than this shot? Let's watch them both real quick. Probably like the panning a little better. Shows a little more. The other one might as well, well have been just a Ken Burns effect on a photo. All right, this one, not so sure about. All right, not bad. Throw some stabilization on that clip. It might, might make the cut. And here in the closet. All right. Stabilize this one as well. And sometimes when you stabilize it, it makes the footage worse. So sometimes, uh, but 
usually it's pretty good. Now we just did a lot of clips in this master. Do we need to add a little more spice with some some blade speed coming in over to this next room? Maybe. So right here we probably, let me hit shift B and then we'll come back over here. That's where I think we should roll out of the blade speed and then we would roll into it right here. Let's bring that back. Four fifteen ain't gonna do it. Twelve X speed at twelve hundred. It's definitely not gonna play back smooth. And it's probably way too. All right, let's stabilize this and see what we got. I mean, that that shot isn't necessary. Like, we're still in the same wing of the house. We have these shots. Did you see my reflection on the wall from a car driving by? So we want to make sure that doesn't show up. So let's just... The, I, I really like the, the fan movement in these shots. It really adds to an otherwise that would have been a pretty boring video without the movement, right? All right, when is this? All right, I was like, when am I gonna stabilize my movements here? All right, let's see here. Right here. All right, that's good. Stabilize. You can see like, Almost mo most of my clips are about two to three seconds. The blade speed ones tend to be like six or so. All right, now, now from there, we would do a transition to be going outside. And I probably wouldn't start so far back. We just kind of want to transition to exit outside. Can we blade speed outside? or blade speed to the door, or do we just cut? Or do we just cut, you know? Let's see. Might just cut here and just start, because this actually doesn't look bad. All right, so then we're out here on the porch. Mix it up here. I think we we should show. I think we should show this clip first. So we come outside. All right. So now we're walking. Man, eighteen second clip. All right, right here. I, it's pretty smooth. I like how my speed is. All right, that's pretty good. Now, this is a long clip. Do we want to, did I have anything good at the tail end? I don't think so. All right, let's see. And then, so we go outside, then we go to here, then we can see the barbecue, the slow motion. Now we're at the barbecue. Yeah, so nice thing about 60p. Any of these clips that we think is a little bit fast, we could go 50% and not have to do anything. So if we want to slow it down to 50, you say, hey, you know what? I was moving a little fast on that shot. Give it three seconds there. Let's make sure the front is smooth. All right, start to get smooth there. We get other shots, other angles in the backyard, so we don't necessarily need a pan all the way out. I just want to show that bathroom right there on the edge. All right. Because then we're over here. Now this is one where we can see our, our camera shadow 
or that's my head it looks like I think it's a good good shot to keep what we'll have to do is just scale it in a little bit all right that's good get rid of this so I don't forget about it let's just go over here scale we can just scale all just zoom it in and that's it for that make sure I'm still out of the shot all right that's good yeah I think we need the pool before here we go with a blade speed this should be the best shot of the pool we got the hot tub all right it's a little rocky there let's shorten it all right so i usually just jump the gun here right here shift b blade speed and where do we want to roll out of our blade speed probably right here and this is one that we may not want very fast. You know, it might look nice slower. This thing can catch up. Ooh. And I either have to go faster or this stabilizer is going to have to make some miracles happen. All right, that's nice. Here, we should go wider like this. So we go here. Wider shot. Closer up shot. This little guy's probably going to get the boot. Unless... There's this shot, this one shot right here. If I, because I really didn't get that sitting area very well. So should I let this one roll out a little more? That is a long clip, but six seconds. No blade speed. Should we make an exception just to showcase this area right here? I was moving a little, little inconsistently too. Not too bad. And then we could potentially use this guy after that clip. It's kind of random. We're not close enough. You'd have to be able to identify where we where we were at. I actually like the shot. Let me scroll through here just to see if we have anything. I don't think I really see this is the slow motion shot that I have of that area. Unless I add this so I could add it right here. So we got this panning and it's just too it's too zoomed in. You don't even see the guy. So, all right, these two are getting the boot. But that was my bad. I should have got. You know, it was kind of a hard thing because the the uh, the tub was right there. I should have just walked over here and got a shot. But too late now. All right, this is rendered out. Let's see how it looks. and stabilized all right that started to get rocky at the very end but i i think it could be a little bit faster doesn't need to be oh all right 1300 it is kind of a long clip so let me see if Just end on that. What are we at? Two. Yeah. I don't know what I anticipated at the beginning, but we're right around two and a half minutes. 
what are we editing so far? 50 minutes. So yeah, these, especially when you're getting started, they'll take a few hours to, um, to get used to them. But I'll, I'll just uh, scale out and just, it looks like everything's rendered out. So we got lucky. Computer was able to render everything. We can kind of preview. We could literally sit and watch this whole thing. It's only two and a half minutes. Just, we're gonna watch it anyway, just to see. So that's a nice uh, beginning. That one's gonna be it. So, I mean, I don't wanna just watch it and not do anything productive with it as you, I think this clip's a little long. It just felt like a little bit too long. Whoops, I don't need to see the index. I did remember what that what the N is called. It's called snapping. I don't know why I couldn't think of it earlier. All right. It feels like this beginning part is a little bit slow. Let's cut, let's do a custom speed on it. Let's put it at like one, 130. Make it a little faster. I don't know if you guys got that feeling either. Yeah, here we go, that, that feels better. Blade speed, then we're coming out slow, which is fine. This one, we could probably start in a little bit more. I felt like it was kind of wide. Yeah, there we go. Make progress on the tour. I'll give this one a little extra time. Let's stabilize it. It doesn't look like it is. Nope. How about this one? Nope. The trick to all my bad camera movement. All right, and then we'll zoom, do a zoom in or something. I think that's that's kind of a signature thing that we do, zoom into the doors. Hmm. It's like the matrix. Yeah, this, that initial shot is just kind of, I don't know, not 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 feeling this. All right, that's all right. Let's give this one a little bit more time, stabilize it. It's weird. You can yeah, I can tell. You can tell uh, the effect that stabilization does, and you'll see how smooth some of these clips look. That stabilization. Stabilize this one. All right, let's see how it rendered. Dang it, I should have played it first. It's probably gonna be choppy now. That's good. And right, that's probably good enough right there. Ooh. That actually turned out good. That was one where I was like, I don't know. Let's trim it off a little bit. It seemed like it lingered on there a little long. That right there would probably be a cooler transition outside than the the doorway that we did. Cause man, don't I get the feeling like when I'm watching this right here, like, oh, we showing outside? Ooh, outside's so cool. Let's go out there. Nope, we're still inside. Just gonna have to wait. All right, this tail end isn't isn't long enough, but I don't think I think it got shaky after that. So let's slow it down fifty percent. Give it a little bit more time. 
we know that we have those extra frames we're, we're working with, um, right? Since it's 24 frames, we shot in 60. We can slow it down. There we go. Give it a little more time. That was perfect. That one too needs a little time. So let's um, let's slow this one to 50 percent as well. All right, that's that's good. And it's probably a little bit. It was a little bit too slow, in my opinion. That looks better. And honestly, a little too slow on the on the speed. Let's crank it up. 2000. Give it a shot. We're going warp speed now. That's good for that. Now, as you can see, like what watching through this uh, this time i'm not really focused on transitions or any effects or anything like that i just trying to get a good flow make these clips make sense duration wise it's probably a little too not enough there we go Now we're going down the hall. All right, let's give a little more time on the hall. And we can just slow it down. We know we can slow it to 50, no problem. I feel like this one could use it. Like maybe not a longer, here, maybe not so slow. We'll slow it down a little bit and not make the clip longer. I just felt like the vibe was a little bit too fast. There we go. You're like, all right, now Jordan, relax on slowing all these clips down. Slow and then trim. A little bit too long, and that chair isn't that important. All right. That one could use stabilization. You could see it was a little rocky. Coming through here. That's looking pretty good. Stabilization did a great job on that. That looks great as well. I'm not so sure about this. Not bad. What are we at? Let's let's go faster. Like it was like kind of a rocky journey and sometimes if you just speed it up, make it go faster, it's not so noticeable, right? I think that that was pretty good. This one could use some slow some sl uh, a slower pace, not necessarily a longer duration. But I think just like a slower. Whoops. Yeah, we'll slow that down here. Same thing with this one. So if you're if you're not shooting fast, if you're shooting in 24 frames, you really got to go slow. That's why we tell you to go go slow. But if you have a hard time with it, shoot at a faster frame rate. That's pretty nice. All right, maybe a little bit too long on the fans. Let me watch this again real quick. So we go from the bathroom. We'll probably do a transition right there. We're coming out on the porch. Slow motion on the fans. Now still keep in mind, like all these shots, 4K, we're editing in 1080. We can scale in, zoom out. We can do all kinds of 
of things. I usually don't do it unless it's really necessary or if it's a really special property. Man, that stabilization on that clip really turned out nice. Because my movement was not that great. All right, so we're uh, two minutes and 24 seconds. All right, I feel pretty good about the flow of that. Now I'm going to start prepping. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to start prepping. All right, so we'll do the property titles. We'll do intro here and the outro. And I've just been not doing the drop because, uh, you know, this ed editing session is more for training purposes. But uh, here, I'll do a quick, so just pretend that this is, I'll just do a quick screenshot. So pretend that's the agent's, uh, this is the agent's logo, right? So I think with this newest Final Cut Pro, it's it's kind of been a pain in the, not a pain in the butt. Usually you can just drop you can just drop right there, but if you click it, then you can come over here and select the frame uh, and just hit apply clip. There we go. So now we have this screenshot has the logo and you can see how it moves with it. Um, let's do the same thing for the beginning as well. So that's kind of a workaround to, as opposed to just dropping it in. Maybe they fixed it. Let me see if I can drop this in because you can see drop zone here's the screenshot usually you could drop it in right here nope but if you click it then you can just find something in the so if we wanted this to be it there we go and apply clip but i'm saying you could just drop the agent's logo on your timeline and just just select it like that and then once you're done you can just delete that and these these still stay all right update the contact information all right, so now we're gonna go through again. This time we're gonna be focused on like transitions. Still no music. Um, I, I, I saved that la for last. I de definitely feel like the editing is better and you're a little bit more focused when you don't throw the music down too early. All right, this is pretty smooth. Giving it enough time for most of these clips. I gave it a little more time there. Now, I saw a little bit of a reflection. It wasn't too crazy on, sorry, this next clip you can see in the glass right here. A little bit towards the end, so maybe I'll trim it just a half a second. And then, zoom, there we are. Panning. We're going pretty slow in this front room, which is fine. It's a kind of an important room. We speed it up here. Yeah, that stabilization really smooth things out. Now here's the shot. This is probably one of my favorite shots of this video because man, I just want to stay out there. All right, that slowed down. Slowing down the footage definitely helped. I mean, this is a little bit jittery. Let me watch it again. It's like a little bit jittery, but I'm trying to think about what, what adjustments I would do to it to make it better or do I clip it or just do I blade speed, speed it further in? It needs to render out again since I made a subtle adjustment, but that's all right. I'm just gonna leave it as is. Let me see if we stabilize it. We did stabilize it. All right. Smooth. You can just see how much smoother these shots look on stabilization in the slow motion, that's stabilized now. That, but sometimes you do want kind of that, that movement in your, in your shots. Usually not too much um, in real estate. So 
So you really, you know, don't have to have the perfect, you know, steadiness while you're shooting to be able to produce a good um, real estate video. Looks good. Now we're going outside. Now we're almost finished with this video and I didn't add any transitions. I do think it does need some. There's some spots where it's, but man, yeah, that, that stabilization really, really made a big difference and just end on that slow motion shot. You could, one thing you can do is, is put at the very end, maybe the money shot of the front or the best shot of the house. Um, if you want, hold on, let me throw my generator on there. The Lister Pro's outro, probably somewhere right there. Scoot it back a little. Scoot it up a little. There we go, that's a good. All right, so, all right, I think I, got, I must have been a little bit distracted talking, so I'm just gonna focus on transitions. All right, so, so we could do uh, that, first, that first shot. We'll go all cross dissolve. Uh, it was a little bit too long of a cross dissolve. Hold on, let me zoom in. Command plus, and now we're going to trim this down. So that cross dissolve doesn't take too long. Now I'm basically just looking for transitions from clip to clip that are kind of rough. I think that's good. Yeah, I like all this so far. Uh, like right there it seemed a little bit rough. Let me see. Mm. Let's do a simple cross dissolve. Eight frames, let's see if that works. Yeah. Let's smooth it out a little bit. This one I should zoom in. Or actually, no, since it is a pretty, it's a pretty big transition, so let's do a little, we could do a flip. I think I'm gonna do uh, these horizontals. Transition back in, but that was a little bit on the slow side. Let's try it again. Come on. A little bit on the fast side. All right, this is probably right. Play. All right, we couldn't tell, but I think that's right. I wonder if we can like swipe left or right, horizontal slide, horizontal, from this to this. I think that might be appropriate. We'll see if we're doing it in the right direction. A little bit too fast. All right. I mean, when you know it's not rendered out, you'll see these white dots up here. Once those white dots are done, you know it's it's finished rendering. You can see it up here. So that, that already rendered. So now we should be able to see it no problem. So that looks good. And I'm gonna go back here since this is rendered as well, just to look at it. All right, that's good. All right, let me speed it up just a little. All right, that'll be good. All right, let me rewatch this. So I made that subtle adjustment. That looks a little better to me. I'm gonna keep it as is. All right, that one's a little jumpy. Usually when it's just a little jumpy, we're similar compositions. I'm just going to uh, do a little cross dissolve. Eight frames. Ooh, no, that doesn't look good. 
longer. Here, let's let it render out. Render out. If you pause from working, it renders out pretty quick. All right, that's good. Maybe from the hallway to the bedroom is kind of a pretty drastic transition. Let's do a, let's try to keep it similar. There we go, we'll just do the horizontal bars. Let's make it a little longer. Yeah, it looks all right to me. All this looks good. Now my next thing is gonna be probably transitioning outside. Honestly, I don't think we need to transition from that bathroom to the where we were on the inside. I think it looked pretty good. Right here on this fan shot, let's add a little uh, keyframe on the, on the fans. Here, I'm gonna turn on snapping, so hit in. And then uh, we'll do position and scale. I, I usually do position and scale by default, but maybe we just, uh, need scale and I think maybe now we'll move it to and then we'll come back out and then we'll we'll do we'll do zero and 100 all right so let's see how it looks Nope, definitely too much. So let's go here. You can hit this little arrow. We'll go to the first keyframe and then we'll just reduce it. It was just too drastic. Let's see if the movement was too drastic. And that yeah, the movement is definitely too drastic as well. So let's go back. Let's let's get rid of the movement. The uh sorry, the position. And we'll just do the subtle scale, eight percent. I think that should be simple enough. Try to go a little bit too fancy or too crazy. Sometimes when you do too much, it turns out good. Sometimes it doesn't. Hold on, is this one stabilized? No, I could tell. I could like almost see my footsteps. And this thing is gonna render pretty quick, so we'll watch it back again, so you'll be able to tell right away the difference. Oh, come on. Should be finished. There we go. All right. Yeah, you can see much, much smoother on that. I think from there we do a fade to black. So if you do, uh, I think it's just fade to color in Final Cut. Let's see, yeah, fade to color. It'll just go black. You can change the color as well. But I think that just is a, is a nicer closeout. You can make it fade, make the fade longer. You can also do the opacity. So if you go here, with each clip, you can expand. Uh, where, where are we at? Show video animation. All right, so you have opacity, all of these transform. You can see everything, but if you double click on opacity, you can fade it out like this, opacity wise. Um, you can have, a, uh, you, you know, there's a lot of different options here in Final Cut Pro. All right, so I feel like we've gone, gone through it. The clips, what are we at? An hour and 15 minutes. All the clips are pretty good. Now we, we I think we're ready for, um, for a track. Now we're at two and a half minutes. So you, ideally we'd have a track that can cover the whole, uh, you know, the whole timeline, but sometimes if you find a really great track and it's not long enough, you'll have to kind of splice it together. 
We could add some swooshes, swoosh noises if we wanted to during the, some of the blade speeds. You gotta find the right ones. I'm not gonna do that today, but you could easily, you know, just add a little bit of background. I definitely don't make them too loud if you do it. It's gotta be pretty subtle, some subtle adjustments, but let's go up here. A lot of times I'll just look at the genre when it comes to the music and see like, all right, what kind of home is this? Probably not that. 2010 pop. That one's a potential. Silence, that one sounds pretty good. Here, let me turn it up so you can hear it. This one is a potential as well. Hurricane, so we got silence, hurricane season. That one might be a little bit too jazzy. Hurricane season might be a little slower pace. It's a two, it's a two minute track, right? So we would have to kind of fade it into another copy of itself. Yeah, I do think hurricane season is a good fit for this one. So let's go with this one. So let's put it here. I usually will like to watch it for a while before I really commit to it. And if you really get into these, you know, you could at this point, once you have music on the timeline, you could try to match clips to beats and stuff like that if you really wanted to. I honestly, I don't worry too much about it. There's gonna be times where clips are on the beat and off. I just don't worry about it too much anymore. I don't think it makes the biggest of difference. Yeah, I actually like the, I like this track with the, with the clip, so, all right, so what I'm gonna do here is just copy and paste the clip. You can, sometimes I'll just see how, how, how they, how it ends. Actually, this one ends pretty, pretty, pretty quickly and I feel like we could just go straight into these beats right here. So I'm gonna clip this, delete. I'm just gonna move this right here next to it. That might, there might be. Yeah, let's let's trim down. And I don't think you'd be able, actually be able to tell much that, uh, that we did this. Actually, a lot of times this is what I'll do. I'll overlap too. We could. Obviously, there's no more tell to that. You could overlap where you fade in and fade out. Here we go. Let's see. All right. That was probably a little bit. All right, let's do it again. All right, that's probably a little bit too much. You can kind of see the waveform on the top of this one. Yeah. That's, that's actually good right there. And then from the end. Trim it, fade it out. Wish the lizard frame would have made it to this point of the video. Got that little snake noise in the track. All right, that's that's that looks good to me. 
All right, so I feel like uh, we're pretty much done. Unless you re really wanted to add some swooshes, we can listen to some here real quick. I think swoosh aid is one that I use a lot. We got these off of Audio Jungle. Some of these you really have to fine tune to make them. All right, so let's see this one. Watch, you'll see where you blade speed. Well, usually it'll just be subtle. You hear it in the background? Just a little bit. You may not be able to hear it too much, but here, let's put it here as well. All right, the whoosh was a little early. But that just, not necessary, but it just adds a little element in the video to make it a little more appealing. One last thing that we didn't do is adjust the colors before we export. And uh, so let's let's do that real quick. So usually, all right, we'll go to this triangle icon, I'll drop down, go to color wheels, and I'll just increase the midtones. Now you can, you can create a preset for your colors if you want. Um, I just tend to do this because it's just pretty easy. And sometimes I'll fine tune it so it, it won't work for every clip, but usually if you just do a subtle adjustment like that on the color wheels, it's not gonna do too much damage to even the in interior video. So I'm just gonna sc just, w just scrub over it real quick, just make sure that uh, none of the clips totally went to went really bad. Um, I mean, if any any shot this really yellow shot, this could probably do without the color wheel adjustment. It doesn't need additional saturation. Um, let's see, in some of these crazy walls, but I was, uh, yeah, probably in this room as well. These crazy orange walls. Um, that midtone adjustment I usually do in um, on exterior shots. Yeah, but you can definitely see. You can do it on the interior as well. You just got to be careful about, you know, what negative impacts it, it might have. So I'll just go through. All right, so what I'm going to do is back, back out. Command Z, Z, Z. See, so I, I did the adjustment here. So now all the footage is back to normal. All I have is this first one with the color wheel adjustment, because I wasn't, I wasn't really a big fan of the color. So I hit Command C, and now I'm just going to do the exteriors only. I think it, it made the interior shots not look uh, realistic. I, I think they look better without the color adjustment. I don't think they, the interior shots look good to me. All right, so all these exterior shots, we'll just shift command V, and then we'll just add, paste the color wheel adjustment. Um, yeah, but you can spend a lot of time coloring, um, pretty much anything you want. All right, so from here, we would call this the branded version because we have the customer's logo right here on the front and the back and you have the agent's contact information. Um, so what we do is from here, once we're finished with the project, you just do go to this arrow and we, we would, you wanna add, we would add the destination and export it to Vimeo and we would title this one the branded version. Then we'd have another version that's unbranded called MLS. And basically all that we do is duplicate the project. So we're working on walkthrough three. Yep, that's the one we're working on. So I'll hit uh, right click, duplicate project. So this walkthrough four, double click on it. And then basically you can just come in here. If you have it all to the beat and whatnot, uh, you probably just wanna keep your music, music intact but if you cut it like that, you probably want to fade it in. Uh, 
probably fade it in a little more. Um, otherwise, you can just cut the front and move the track to where the beginning is still at the beginning of the video. Um, and then at the end as well. You can leave your company logo. That's not the end of the world, but um, it's really all about the agent information. I think, I'll, now that I think about it, I think most of the time we do remove ours as well on the... Uh, so then we'll just move this up. And then it faded out, so that's it. And then we just export this version right here as the unbranded MLS version, so. Anyways, that was an hour and 26 minute edit. Pretty much from start to finish of this walkthrough video, we had a lot of footage and I think the video turned out great. I think the customer would be happy with this particular video. But if you guys have any additional questions on how to edit a property like this, feel free to reach out and we'll see you guys on the next one.